Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Rader, and this video is designed for students to either preview uh, day 18 in unit two of participation in government or review the lesson that you may have completed in uh, class today, looking at the role of the executive branch in democracies and in particular looking at uh, the power of the president of the United States and determine whether or not the president is exceeding their authority when crafting particular decisions. So in the image uh, you can see in front of you on the screen, we see Franklin Roosevelt uh, doing one of the chief roles of the president, which is to communicate the agenda of his administration to the American public and to really explain to them uh, what his program is and why the American people should uh, be motivated to buy into his uh, legislative reform package. And in this lesson, you are either going to be looking at or you began to look at the New Deal. And you want to be able to evaluate whether or not the New Deal was an overreach of executive power. And the tool that you'll use today is the debate carousel, which you can do to really uh, collaborate with your classmates to really figure out if Roosevelt's New Deal was an overreach of executive power. So in this video, we'll take a quick look at some context information, and then we'll look at the debate carousel itself. So in order to really understand why the New Deal was passed, this document could be very useful, the timeline of the New Deal. And the main reason why the New Deal was a thing was the United States was trying to recover from a devastating economic depression that was, start, that was started in the 1920s by over speculation and um, overuse of credit, particularly with buying stocks with on-margin securities and the ensuing bank panics of the early 1930s. So FDR really wanted to provide the American people relief to give them jobs, to provide them with a sense of purpose to help the American economy recover, and really to reform the economy in a way to try to prevent future depressions or future economic downturns from turning into depressions. So in terms of some of the uh, laws that were passed, I'm just gonna note it here. We see the uh, Federal Securities Act, which gave the executive branch the authority to regulate stocks and bonds, which is one of the reasons why there was a depression in the first place. Uh, the Homeowners Refinancing Act, providing aid to homeowners in danger of losing their homes, that addresses the, the relief for homeowners who were losing their houses due to bank foreclosures. And um, really looking at the National Labor Relations Act and Social Security uh, as ways to think through um, reforming, reforming the American system. And, and not everybody in the United States agreed with President Roosevelt. And as a result, a lot of his initiatives were challenged in the courts. And that in and by itself is actually a good thing because it serves as an additional um, form of checks and balances on presidential power, right? If we go back to day 16, we see in the checks and balances lesson that one of the things that the judicial branch can do is to determine if an executive action or a law is unconstitutional through the judicial review process and therefore can rule it as unconstitutional and make the law void. So in the debate carousel, uh, what you'll wanna do is use your judgment and your evidence that, you, that you'll gather by reading the court cases using the OIA's hyperlinks in your Google slides to come up with a position to that key question, whether or not Roosevelt's initiatives were an overreach of executive authority. Uh, you'll wanna share access to your debate carousel with a partner. So ideally, if you're on a computer, you can just share the Google Doc and provide your partner with editing or uh, suggestion access. Uh, if you're in person in class and you may be using a, uh, a set of uh, poster paper or newsprint, something like that, uh, you could always pass around the paper literally in person as well. Uh, but it, it, using the remote access is an easy way to share the document. You'll wanna add a supporting claim piece of evidence into a reason to box two. You will then read through your partner's materials and you'll add a claim piece of evidence into a reason that challenges or refutes your peers to box three. Then you'll share it with another classmate and you'll add your own thoughts or opinions to the points being made in box number four. And you can add the comments directly to your peers' Google Doc by either adding suggestions or editing directly with the color ink of your choice. This way it makes it very clear 
to your classmates who is providing who with concrete suggestions and feedback. So in the document itself, uh, all the materials in terms of the court cases are in the independent work. And if you click on the, on the underlined link, it brings us to OYAs and we can clearly see what these decisions were about. So for example, if we look at the case United States versus Butler, we can go into OYAs and we can say, okay, so what was this case about? And one thing that can be very useful, we can look at how the justices ruled. Was it a unanimous decision, nine to zero? Was it a very controversial decision, five to four? Or were they split along uh, a different uh, form of maybe a six to three decision or a seven to two decision? So in this case, which was argued in 1935, this looks at the Agricultural Adjustment Act of 1933 which was in the New Deal time, uh, timeline. And the basic facts was that Congress implemented a processing tax on agricultural commodities from which funds would be redistributed to farmers who promised to reduce their acreage. And the question before the court was, did Congress exceed its constitutional taxing and spending powers with the act? So if we look at the right to tax, that is a right that's given to Congress as part of the constitution. And it was a six to three decision for Butler and in this opinion, the majority declared that the act was unconstitutional because it attempted to regulate and control agricultural production in arena reserved to the state. So this would be a court case that would challenge the uh, Roosevelt administration and would argue that they overreached um, the powers that were being coordinated between the president and the legislative branch. And the other cases tell, give us different kinds of evidence to support um, either one perspective or the other. And we can see that, uh, you know, depending on what the case was, it might have been uh, relatively uh, non-controversial or might've been very controversial. For, so for example, the National Labor Relations Board versus Jones and Lockman Steel Corporation was a five to four decision. So it was a little more controversial. Whereas the uh, Shrek to Poultry Corp, when we click on it, we can see more information about that and we can see the unanimity in this particular case. And we can see it was a unanimous decision for Schechter in this case. And in this case, the court held that the act that was passed was without precedent. It was an unconstitutional delegation of legislative authority. And the court argued that the president could not be allowed to have unbridled control to make whatever laws he believed necessary to achieve a certain goal. So this would be another case that would that could support the claim that, that the president uh, did overreach uh, during his three terms in office, but specifically looking at really the first term of office. So you'll use the evidence from these court cases to evaluate whether or not the New Deal was an overreach of executive power. And that'll do it for today. I hope everybody has a great day. And if you're going about to do this lesson tomorrow, I wish you the best of luck. And if you are reviewing this, the, the current day's lesson, I hope this provided you some additional context and information. Have a great day.